Not long ago, me and Geraldine and little Jan and the boys left Hope, Arkansas. Headed for Houston, Texas, where we're supposed to play the next night. Now, there's a lot of you out there that ain't going to believe this. But it's a fact with my hand. I got folks that still come up and say, I don't believe that snake story. I don't believe that Volkswagen story. I can't help that. All I can do is tell you this is a true story. We left Hope, Arkansas about midnight, 2.30 in the morning, somewhere between Hope and Houston, Texas. We had a disaster in that bus that could only come to a born loser. There was an explosion in the bins from an electrical system, the motor or whatever, all blew up in the bins of that thing and set the bus on fire. Now, this is a fact, what I'm telling you with my hand. I've set the bus on fire. The awfulest noise I have ever heard in my life, and, and of course, Ricky was driving, and, and it seemed like a day before he could get that thing off the road and over on the shoulder. I was absolutely out of my mind. Instantly, we started to smell the smoke from all the electrical wiring start burning. We, we stopped the truck, I, uh, the bus, I started screaming, for everybody get off, get off, get off. And, and, and it's just stampeding down the aisles. Everybody was trying to get off of that bus. I was looking for it to blow up any minute. Everybody bailed off. The boys jerked on clubs and just started jerking equipment out of those bins and jerking the wires out with those red hot wires out of that bin. Smoke was billowing up. It was the most horrible looking thing I've ever seen in my life. I just knew any minute it was going to go. And then I looked around and I realized Geraldine wasn't there. <laughs> Geraldine's always a little late. <laughs> Getting the word. So, so once uh, you got to realize that everybody else was fighting with everything. Uh, my daughter Wendy had given me a uh, one of these new kind of fire extinguishers for Christmas and the boys grabbed that thing in there spraying it as some kind of gas you know that helps put out the fire and, and, and everybody scared to death I was scared to death at any minute the boys is going to get overcome with the smoke that's having to run right in the smoke any minute they're going to pass out there dead or something and look around and realize Geraldine was still on that bus I can't tell <laughs> I can't tell you what that done to me. I can't tell you the fear that went through my body. I didn't know what in the world to do. But there's one thing I did know. The amount of danger didn't matter to me. It didn't matter how dangerous it was. It didn't matter me that that, to me that that bus is about to blow up. Nothing mattered to me except Geraldine. I'll tell you, I've dedicated my life to taking care of these girls. And there ain't no danger too great from, for me whenever they're in danger. So I told little Jan, get on there and get her. <laughs> mm. Now, now, you ain't going to believe this. You ain't going to believe this. But all I can do is tell you what happened. Geraldine has a gown. It's her favorite gown. It's the gown that she wears more than any other gown. And if there's doubt about it, I can show you the gown. Her aunt made it for her for a birthday present. And, and, and it, it was kind of a joke. On this, this gown, you remember how in the old days, I don't know if y'all as poor as I was whenever you was a kid, but if you was, you remember flower sack dresses. Poor folks used to wear flower sack dresses, yeah. <laughs> but now the dresses you made back then, you made out of flower sacks, you made them, had them little flowers on there. They fix that way where you could do that after you eat up all the flour. Geraldine's aunt made her a, a flower sack gown, only she used two great big old flower sacks from Martha White, Seth Rise, and Flower. She used two big old sacks, put them together, got the big old flower sack on one side, on the other. That's Geraldine's favorite gown. She happened to have that thing on that night. She comes barreling off the bus. When she finally realized that the thing is on fire, she finally barreled off the bus with her, with her overnight bag in her hand. Oh, 
I don't know where she's going. But she, she, she was then, when she realized what's happened, she is wild. First thing she hollered was, grab the flamethrower. I said, Geraldine, the bus is already on fire. We don't need that. I, of course, I, I, I knew what she meant. But, but Geraldine was out of it. We had that CB radio going as loud as it go, hoping that some of them truck drivers is going to see our dilemma and stop, maybe furnish us with another fire extinguisher. And, and, and we had that thing going full blast. I was standing right there by the door telling these boys what to do. <laughs> well, my hand up, this is the truth. You don't have to believe it if you don't want to. Tractor trailer comes by. Fellow on the tractor trailer, he's talking to his buddy back down behind him somewhere down the road. So he said, hey, Tupelo. He said, this is Bubba. <laughs> he said, fat put on to He said, Tupelo, he said, I'm up here about the 113 mile marker. And he said, you want to kind of ease up here when you get up this far. He said, there's a big old bus up here. Look like it's on fire. He said, now the bus is pulled off, so it ain't in the way. Don't worry about it. But he said, Tupelo. He said, just beyond that bus. Now, I done told you about how frantic Geraldine gets. He said, just be on that bus. I'm going to tell you something you ain't going to believe. He said, there's a great big old sack of Martha White Seth Rising Fly. <laughs> going up that highway, carrying an overnight bag. Come back on that, Bubba. 